Yo, so this video is going to be going over a Google form which you can send your clients during the onboarding email, <clears throat> which is really important for making sure that you totally understand your client's business and what they should expect and what you should expect when you're working together. So um, I only recently made this form. I used to have another one which weren't that good. I, I still had to ask my clients those a question, but the reason you need to have a Google form, and I've learned this the hard way, is to stop you having to text your client on WhatsApp assuming you've followed my system, you have their WhatsApp number, um, like loads of different times when you're doing the ads and it's just confusing and then it longs everything out. Whereas when you have one form, they answer it straight away and then you have all the information you need to know. So um, as you can see, the first thing that Google make you do is collect an email address. That's just good to have in general. Uh, you might have it already, but if you don't, just add it on your form. Um, and then even if you have it already, it just makes sure that you have a written record of their email that you can always go back to. Um, I just did a brief like explanation at the top. It's not a decision you regret. Please answer a few questions so we can know your business a bit better and work towards getting the best results possible. So they need to understand that the reason they're answering this is because the more you know about their business, the more the better the results you can get them. So from there, uh, I just asked their daily advertising budget. Of course, you want to know that because, um, well, you're going to be spending their ad money, so you need to know how much they're willing to spend. I have had a client put two pounds in this, and then I spoke to them separately and said, you need to do a minimum of 10 pounds. So now I'm thinking of changing this and adding in brackets minimum 10 pounds because it should be minimum 10 pounds uh, for any client you work with. Bonus tip, if a client doesn't want to do 10 pounds, say, say this to them. I'd rather you commit for two weeks with 10 pounds a day than a month on five pounds a day um, because you will not be able to do great results on five pounds a day. You might be able to get some leads in, but obviously if you're in Facebook ads and as you'll find out, not every lead is great. <laughs> not every lead responds and not every lead books a job or a client or becomes a client for your client. So you want to make sure they're doing 10 pounds a day. So maybe put in brackets, minimum 10 pounds a day there. And if they say less, say you'd rather them commit for 10 pounds for two weeks than, or for 200 pound, then you would, they commit for five pound for, for a month because you need 10 pounds to get results. Then you want to ask their postcode. This is one, so you can set up go high level and two, so that you can put in the postcode on Facebook when you're setting the radius for them to advertise in. And hence you want to know the radius they'd like to advertise in, how far they would like to travel for clients. So if you're doing home improvement where your client is traveling to the client's houses, this is really important. But if people are coming to your client's business, like a chiropractor or anything like that, then it's a bit different. So uh, I'm not really too sure on that one, but just make sure your client writes in a number there so you know how happy they are to advertise um, or, or how far they want the advert to be seen. Um, and then the next question is how many clients can you take on each month? Truthfully, you're not going to be, well, if you're amazing at your job, you're going to be overflowing your client with appointments. But in my case, when you're bringing, when I'm bringing my client jobs that are really, really expensive on the higher ticket end, it's not like I'm bringing them 50 jobs a month and they can't keep up, but it just, it adds a layer of professionalism and it makes them think, oh, wow, they might actually give me too many jobs. Hence, they want to work with you even more because your client can still pull out at this point. Okay. But your client can still not want to work with you at this point. Um, you know, they, they might not be interested anymore, uh, like once they read your contract or something. So you want to keep impressing them and keep the layer of professionalism. Don't get complacent. Uh, on average, how much does each client bring you in revenue? You want to know that because then you can know how much you should charge when you go on to charging monthly retainers. And then do you have a set lead follow-up system in place? This is going to make sure that um, you know if your client's good at sales or not, basically. And most of the time they're going to click no, but it's nice to know. If they do, then great. Uh, you don't need to set up all this go high level automation stuff, but you probably will most like 99% of the time. I've never had a client click yes in this case. So yeah, so you can share this um, or you just literally press send and then type in their email. But the best way to do it is to go to link and copy this link and put it in the onboarding email, which I'm going to be talking about in the next episode, where I go through what you should include in this onboarding email and when you should send it. But it's pretty obvious, all self-explanatory, but definitely stick around because it's a valuable video um, nonetheless. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you made it this far in the series, I am seriously, seriously appreciative. Um, I really hope you found some value out of this. And if there's anything, anything, anything you want to know, 
then drop a comment or like message me. Um, yeah, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.